in Long Island, New York. Well, welcome to Coast. Uh, say hi to David Wilcock. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Dave. How are you guys doing? Doing good, Chris. Well, I have a question for David in terms of reading his new book, uh, The Ascent Mysteries, which I'm very enjoying very much. Thanks. And one of the chapters was um, Nikola Tesla, the P. P. Peterson and Nikola Tesla, Black Ops. Yep. Is one of them is about Black Jesus, where the ascended being appearing in Africa. Yep. And I just want to know if you know any more information you would share with us, because I thought that was very captivating to me, and I just wanted more information on it. Yeah. Uh, the Black Thank Jesus you, Chris. Story, the Black Jesus story was uh, probably one of the most shocking things I ever heard. Um, it came from my insider, uh, Jacob, I call him that in the book, who actually was working for the Rothschilds and still does. And um, also is a whistleblower who doesn't really do what they want, but continues to work for them because he feels like there's some very serious extraterrestrial threats to Earth and that what they're doing is very necessary to protect us. So the story goes that in the 1960s, there was a black man uh, in Africa who came in with abilities complementary to those of Jesus. And... Uh, he was performing miracles. He was starting to get people to listen to what he had to say. And the cabal tried to kill him. And, you know, they could shoot him in the head and his skull would just regenerate and the flesh would grow back and uh, he was fine. And, uh, you know, so the crazy story that I heard, which, and, and remember, I was told at the time that if I disclosed this, that I would be uh, killed. And I ended up putting it in the book anyway. Um, but the story was that this guy, uh, you know, they finally said, okay, we're going to bring you to the United Nations and share your message with the world. Let's get you on this flight. They, they bring him on this flight, and instead of bringing him to the United Nations, they shot him repeatedly and then actually had some kind of meat grinder device uh, and basically like a bandsaw, I guess, and sawed up his body into a whole bunch of pieces put him in these very, uh, very like radioactive shielded uh, containers and then had all these fighter jets dock with the plane and fly his body parts to all corners of the world where then these containers um, uh, turned them into ash. And uh, they thought that maybe this would defeat him, like that his body somehow, the tissue was necessary so if they destroyed all the tissue in all these places across the world, maybe they could defeat him. Well, he then regenerated in, in their offices and was fully fine, fully intact. But the sad part is that he said, you know, I, you guys so badly do not want me to be here that I am not going to be able to do any more. You're going to get what you want. But bear in mind that in the future, many others like me will be coming, and when they do, you will not be able to stop us. Wow. Wow. Now, well, that's that is a... all I know. Unfortunately, right. there's nothing more to the story than that. Um, I, I don't... Incredible. So in this Bantu Awakening, we have to show, not for our name, but for Tatan Zambi, for his people, that so that we may help one another with the gifts that was given to us. So feel free in this Zoom session always to come up. As Mama uh, Tamara said, I want to learn with you. I want to learn with you. So I believe we are now ready to start our Zoom session of today. Thank you, family, for joining us. I uh, will ask Amoli, our brother Benika, to lead us in opening prayer for us to start. Amen. Amatunda Masaka. See me, family. See me. Nice Siemi. to see you. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Sister Keisha, <laughs> Brother <Yeah>. Ellison. Yes. <laughs> um, everyone, welcome. You know, it is always a pleasure 
Elder Abaini, welcome. <laughs> and nice to see you too. Elder Timothy and everyone, you know, <laughs> if I mention the name, yeah, we will be going along. So, I want to feel you. Yeah, oh, you forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that, that, that's the energy we're supposed to have, you know, yes, Matundu Masaka family, I want to invite you in prayer, you know, um, yes, I will be praying under Psalm 71, yeah. Yeah, but um, I will be praying in our own language, you know, not somebody else's language. <laughs> yeah, our language. This is Psalm um, 71, 1 up to, to 8. Yeah, to Samba. It means let's pray. Kwangi yave ntinini uyambula yafusu kansoni Kuya kwele mfu. Muna unsongi waku unkola yoku untaisa. Untambu matu wa mpulu za kala utadi diame diankundila kuna mfuete kuendaka. Okani kini ya vuluzwa kadi umbeka ma yefika. Enzambiame utusaisa. Untaisa vana koko kwa kimpumbula. Kwa kimpumbulu. Vana koko kwa mkwa vilwa yulufuna. Kadingeye uvuvu kiame efumu yavu. Ye uvuvu kiame tukakuna kileke. Omungeye ya ye kama tukamena ya utukila. Muna moyo wa ngudi yame. Ngeye wankakula. Enkembele ala ame omungeye ikweme. Ngina, ngina sekumbu kwa wantu wengi. Kasinge itininu dia mediangolo. Unuwame uzala yomkembo waku. Yowete waku lumbu kelumbu. Yowete waku lumbu kelumbu. Oh, nzambi. Nzambi ya zulu, nzambi ya toto. Beza. Bikado ambasi ya zulu. Bikado ambasi ambuta ya zulu. Beza kutuika ma. Passivo to the Atakonda Kawonga. Passivo to the Atakonda Kawonga. We give you praise for this amazing time to meditate in your word. Equip us with strength and power because we are your children. Sedietu Kokuzulu, Yamula Zinadiaku Sitisangua, Eking Tinu Kiakukiza. Oluzolo lua kulafanga maa ovasire kukuzulu. Utufanadia kwetu kwe lumbu ke lumbu. Utuloloka masumu meto. Endolo katuloloka ngatatu weto. Utufidiko kumuna mpuku muni. Utufuluza muna mbi. Kadikia kuye kintinu. Pie ngolo. Yonkembo. Amvu ya mvu. Mene. Hallelujah, Matondo Masaka. The Bundu Luvuva Moon. Yala. 
Yes. This is the Yala that must reign over us. Yala, you already know the meaning of this word, is to be in charge, to control the circumstances and let anything else take over your life. Sadness, anxiety, sickness, you know, and everything else you can think about. So my brothers and sisters, today we will carry on, um, you know, with our, our session. Just before we jump, uh, I would like to ask, is there uh, any question you have for the previous section, session we had? You know, last session we went through a lot of stuff so, so far. Well, there is no question, let's move on, you know. And I will be sharing my screen. And, uh, you know, please get ready because we will be picking some of you to read. <laughs> and uh, yes, the, the notes that we prepared, you know, English is not my language, forgive me. Sometimes we say, but we don't mean that. <laughs> you know, you may, I hope you may understand us. Yes, I trust you may understand that. Yeah, and if you have a question, please ask. Because sometimes I say something, you know, I'm sure that I say correctly, but I don't mean, and you understand maybe in a different way, <laughs> but I didn't mean that. Yes, and I will be presenting the test we prepared, you know, according to the level of our English understanding. So, Mama Tamara, forgive us, you know, you'll be starting off. <laughs> oh, you're drinking tea, right? Oh, she's drinking tea. Okay. Um, okay. She's hot chocolate. Say I can again? start. Oh, I'm drinking okay. hot, cho hot chocolate, but yeah, I can start. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. You know, um, but before um, this is the, let me just present. Um, this is what we have to share with you. Where is it? Um, okay. Okay. You know, um, we are going through some, you know, some document. Simon Toko wrote himself. Yes. You know, um, no matter, matter, can you see it properly? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Yes, so this is, you know, Nkanda Mangudi Mbumba Masiesie. So these are the words of this man that we've been speaking about. Simon Toko, at name Mayamona. He wrote thousands and thousands of documents, you know, and this document contained a lot of prophecies. So the question is, why are we speaking a lot about this man? You know, just as Brother Ellison said, you know, in the world, you will not hear people speaking a lot about our African, you know, um, leaders or African people that are Tanzania sent to open our eyes. And this man that we speak about is a black man, but he's not a normal black man. You know, the thing that we, 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 we already have shared to you, you know, some stuff to the world, it seems like doesn't make sense. You know, if you go to, to somebody, you know, and say, you know, uh, I had a press session and I was talking to Prince Michael and I was talking to Angel Seraphine and Noah and Enoch. I was talking to them. They will say you're crazy. Because <laughs> they say, how? How come? Enoch has died long time ago. Noah has died long time ago. But how come you're talking to them? 
they will say you for them doesn't make sense but for us you know for you and for 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 for, for me it makes sense you know and this knowledge that we have was delivered was taught to us by this man Simon Tok is the one that show up to mama laurinda and said i show a lot of miracle i show deep stuff that you can't find nowhere to talk with community and these are the stuff that you are bringing out to give you too because you belong to the family <laughs> and this the same knowledge that you are giving to you this is a prophecy not from me but i also received this prophecy guess what there will be a time people will be asking you so many questions because especially you know as a african people we are we supposed to, to know our own stuff so when the world find out about this man they will be asking you a lot of question last last year prince michael say you know it was a prophecy it was you must prepare you have to prepare yourself he was advising us all of all of us you know especially the congregation here in south africa and we didn't understand and he said yes you have to prepare you have to read many book on simon toko kimbango you have to read because national coming and they will ask a lot of question you know back last year i didn't know about this awakening i didn't know anything and here we are today you know sharing this message to you and you know and you're asking question so the same thing has happened to us will happen to you also they will be asking you question if you heard about this man simon toko and you will say yes so tell me about this man so you better know some stuff <laughs> yeah because the power that he has oh yeah it's incredible it's incredible the only thing i know is that the all the hosts from heaven all the hosts you know ambasi and mbuta all the hosts from heaven they are under his command i say this without hesitating all of them and they know who this man is and they the host when the one that comes down whether it is angel or prophet to talk to us they deliver a lot of message to us and recently we just we just received some stuff from somebody who is there in the diaspora I won't, i won't mention the name but from somebody who is there in the diaspora a message and when i took over to deliver the message that a lot has been released a lot has been released so be be ready this prophecy came from you <laughs> they asked for a, you know to us as well so what we have to do is to be ready so mama tamara yes please let's go slowly and sometime i will stop you you know for us to discuss a little bit yes okay There is only a unique city of Jerusalem and it is found in the Jewish land of Israel. But also since long time the city has been despised by Tata and Zambi. Luke 21:24 and yes. Luke Yes, and Luke 30, 13, 34. 13, 34. Yes. You have your Bible there Mama Mama Mary. Yes. Luke 21:24 says And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled Yeah look at 13 now Yeah in Luke 13 Luke 13:34 says, "O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, 
and ye would not. Matando Masaka. You know, this is what he said with a lot of confidence. This is what he said. But first of all, I have to say this, you know, um, there is a lot of secret. And there is a lot of stuff that we can't find in the Bible. Because even Isaiah, when he came, he said, some stuff I can't tell you now because you can't bear. You know, and the, the, the European, they lied to us. Say that you can't aid or take some stuff from the Bible. What about those stuff that are not there? How shall we know? <laughs> you know, when we reveal what we know, they said, hey, keep quiet. Don't say that. You can't take or add something from the Bible. There is a lot that is not there in this Bible we read. A lot of stuff. You know, this is what Simon Choku said about the Israel. There is only one city is there, you know, let's say Mesopotamia, you know, is there, Middle East, as they call it now. But that land, in other words, is cursed. This is why our focus must, must not be that side, must, must, must be here in the land, in Africa. You know, some people, they are looking there in, in Israel, so-called Israel, in Jerusalem. And they forget, they, they forgot Africa. But no, we have to look here. This is the promised land. Africa is the promised land. In Israel, if you look, there is nothing there. You don't compare Israel to Africa in terms of resources. You don't compare. <laughs> you do not compare. That land is cursed. As you read Mama Tamara, that land is killed, you know, Many of our prophets, including Asaya, they killed him. This is why Simon Tuku said that that land had been despised by Tatanzam. So Tatanzam forgot about that land. Mm. So the question is, why shall we forget about that land? What, you know, why can't we focus there? Our ancestors, you know, everything happened here. You remember Abraham, he came, you know, from Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, he came to here, this place, to Africa. Later on, when our ancestors went to Egypt, they didn't go at that time. They came here. But, you know, our ancestors' behavior. We always rebelling, you know, standing against that example. But when we sin again, you will read it. I think it's Ezra, you know, Ezra say. Because when you, when you speak about Kana, Kana is here, is Africa, isn't it? Kana, Kana is Africa. <laughs> A beautiful land full of, you know, resources. It's Africa, it's not another land. It's Africa. So when they sin once again, Tatan Zambi send, you know, um, most of our people that side to Mesopotamia. The book says, you know, Tatan Zambi, you know, calls for the king, you know, I think, in, I don't know in English the, the, the name of that king, Kushan something, you know, he raised that king to come to attack our own people and took most of them that side. So that land doesn't belong to us. Our land is here. Another example is like you are an American, but you're not American. <laughs> you know, you are from here. You belong to Africa, but you are in America, you know. And let's say if a Saya was born in America, people would say he is American. No, he's not American. He's an African man, but he was born there. Does it make sense? <laughs> Yes. You know, and since the day you were taken to that side, you're still there. You know, long time, you're still that side. You didn't come here. So our sisters, they were taken somewhere. It's all about, you know, uh, leaving the land when we sin. So, but we will not, you know, um, 
to stretch this conversation that much because this is not the focus of our conversation. I just wanted to make a, 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 you know, a small point, but we will speak about this, you know, openly uh, in another opportunity. I just wanted to clarify about this land, about Jerusalem, because this land is cursed. If you say it is in Africa, you know, even Mesopotamia was, was you know, was Africa, let me say like this, was Africa, it was Africa, but now they call Middle East. But that, that land is cursed. And let me say this, Israel is not a land, it is, it is a people. So whenever we move, we leave our name there. Israel is not a land, it is a people. Just you are there in America, you will find some community named after your name, for example, let's say, you know, and it is named after your name because you are African and you are taking that side, but you are not from there. So let me stop here for now. And, uh, you know, before jump to our, to the second point, Elder Kennedy, I saw his hand. Yes, Elder. Yeah, I wanted to add uh, that uh, from the evidence we've had, Jerusalem is, uh, is in Namibia because it still has the historical location of the Bible, the mountains, the rivers, the journey from the Egypt all the way to Namibia. So what the nations did is that they copied and pasted the location from South Africa to Israel. Because if you, got, if you take the Bible to Israel, it cannot fit in the current Israel. Israel is too small. So the, the, the exact location of Jerusalem is in the Jewish land, the Jewish people who are the Bantu, the land being the Bantu location, south of Sahara. But now Jerusalem originally was in Namibia. Matondo Masaka, elder for your contribution. Yes, Matondo Masaka, thank you very much. Yes. You know, and uh, yeah, as we said, we will go deeper to about to this, you know, next time. <laughs> yeah, we'll go about. And we will base, you know, um, in the scripture, you know, and we will, we will discuss things normally in a point that it may, must, must make, make sense. It must make sense, you know. And uh, yes, elders say something, you know, and, uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, many opinion. Yeah, people have many opinion, which is normal due to, you know, to, to what happened in this world because everything got confused. So now sometimes to find out it is a bit difficult, but yes, thank you very much elder. And then next time, you know, we'll often speak about this clearly. If Jerusalem was, you know, Namibia was there, was here and whatever. Yeah. Matano Masak, elder Matamara, let's go. Okay. Number two, in this world, there is no such Jerusalem as the city of Tata and Zombi, except that which is in Zulu, heaven, where the spirits of the Lord and Basi angels dwell. Galatians 4, 26. And it says, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. This is why it is needed that every servant of Tata and Zombie must do Bible studies. It is true. In Kanda and Zombie, Holy Bible has too many readers, although not all of them understand well the Bible or put it into practice. Vision about the Holy Land. You may say whatever you want to say, but I continue to write you the truth. The New Jerusalem that we wait the New Jerusalem that we wait, I could not get in there when I was studying in Luanda. These are things I do not want to say because of the world only believes by seeing, by listening only, it does not believe. In 1936, when I was studying the second year of 
Lesua in Luanda. I felt I've lost uh, we say Liceo, yeah. Yeah, we, did, we say Liceo, yeah. <laughs> okay. Liceo in Luanda, I fall sick with double pneumonia while I was under Episcopal Methodist Evangelic, <laughs> Evangelic Mission. My story is very long, but I limit myself by saying that we were two colleagues that were sick. The doctor that was taking care of us was black, native from San Tome by name Alves Mendez. A reverend from the evangelic mission used to say, I don't want to invite white doctor. The reason is that black that back in those days, there were a lot of envy. The doctor from San Tome said, these two boys uh, that are sick. Just a second on my mama tomorrow. You know, um, the, if you see the way you write this, this letter, it's very deep. Because, you know, last time we say people were asking him plenty of questions. Because, you, know, they, they, you, know, you, you know, they had a lot of questions in mind. They were asking a lot, and some of them were doubting on him. This is why he was forced to write and to reveal about this ring that he had. And, it, and up there, he say that the stuff that I tell you is truth. Even though some of you do not believe by listening, only by see. It's like you want to see it, to believe in me. But what I'm telling you is true. And this is the vision he said. Back on those days, while he was still a child, when he fell sick, you know, he was taken, he was, he was assisted by, by a black doctor. Because, you know, we told you last time that the, the, the Mundele, they came to look for him, you know. And imagine somebody came to look for you, to harm you, now you're sick. Will you give yourself to that, to that person to, to take off you? We'll kill you. You know, that person will kill you. This is what they are doing. Let me say, they in, in state that this thing is happening. They are killing a, a lot of our people. This is why yes. this black doctor, he said, no, I will take care of this kid. No Mundele will be allowed to take care of this kid. This is why he said, I, I don't want to invite, you know, excuse for the word white doctor. This is what he said. The reason why is that back in those days, you know, they used to, to, to persecute this kid. In other words, to kill him. That was the mission. But guess what? Those doctors, they were priests. They were priests. They were dressing nice. They were pastors. But they had another second agenda. This is why our, our elders, they were very wise and said, no, let's protect this kid and keep, 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 keep them away from these Mundele doctors. Yes, Matamara, point eight. Okay. The, the doctor from San, the doctor from Tomé said, these two boys that are sick with double pneumonia will only be Sappho's, well, after eight days. But after eight days, I was in a state of, of coma, lying down on the lap of my spiritual mo mother, Mama Maria Juliana Adriano. She lives in San, San Bizango, San Bizango. I don't know if she is still alive. Only my classmate sister, Maria Victoria, is the one who knows the truth about my sickness and some brothers from Abrazete back in those days, back in those times. After Reverend August Klebisatel, Klebisatel had lost his animus and patience he bought a coffin that cost about 500 escudos back in those, those times. I was almost dead on the lap of Mrs. Maria Julia Adriano. While people were crying for me, I had a vision. In yes, a vision, sir. I climbed. Just a second on Matamara. You know, he was sick. And this doctor, you know, this doctor, <laughs> This doctor, 
you know, if you check the, the, the name, that, that, that is not a Congo name. We don't have that kind of name. That's a European name. They bought coffin. They say the kid are dead, they bought coffin to bury the kid, to bury Simon Toko and his colleague. You know, while he was on the lap of his spiritual mom, this, this guy who bought a coffin, it's like, oh, forget about, you know, this boy. Let's bury him because he's dead. He bought a coffin. Mm. Mm. Go ahead and watch Mara. In a vision, I climbed a very and very tall mountain that reached the clouds. And when I reaching closer to the top of the mountain, I saw a beautiful clearness of a white and yellow light of a beautiful city. And I heard a voice. It is the future New Jerusalem. I wanted to cross the other side of the mountain that separates the world and the city. And a tall man appeared and asked me, Samoa, where are you going? I responded to him saying, I want to see that city. I don't see the houses, but I see the lights. And he said to me, go back to the world because you have, because you will have a lot of work for you to do later on. Then he said, do you know who I am? I said, yes, sir, I know you. You are prophet Elijah. Then he said, okay, but you can't come here now. Yes, you can come later whether you have, whether you have faith. Then I, then I say, I don't want to go back to the world anymore because there is a lot that does not please me. He says, Samoa, don't insist. Go back immediately to the world. There are things waiting for you. I didn't want to go back. Then he grabbed me and he turned me to the mountain in descent and gave me a great kick by the back. Truly speaking, it is by seeing to believe and I was rolling from top to bottom like a ball with a thousand and thousand of tumbles. That was a serious case. <laughs> After that, I heard people saying, Samoa, open your eyes. And when I opened my eyes, I saw my classmates full of tears and I was very weak. Then I asked why my classmates were crying and people told me that I and my other, I and my other class name, mate, classmate name, Sebas, Sebastio were dead. I wanted to cry, but I couldn't. When the yes. doctor arrived to the- Come Tamara, sorry. You know, mm -hmm. um, they said, you know, we'll stop you for a few moments. This is what we happened. What happened? We shared you uh, last session, a little bit about the, what happened to him. And, you know, now we are going in details to what happened to him. This is the vision. He was still a kid. He was still a kid when he had this vision. He was a boy. Liceo was like elementary school. You know, Liceo, it's like elementary. You know, elementary is for kid. He was still a kid. And this is the vision he had. But when this man, Prophet Elijah, said, you know, um, you know, you, you, don't, you can't come here. You have to go back. You know, this scenario is compared to, you know, when, if you remember 2000 years ago, you know, when Isaiah was in the, he was, was in the mountain, when he was praying, Elijah and Masa, Moses, appeared. And they were talking to him. In other words, they were strengthening him and telling, to, and telling him what he will be going through. And if you remember when Isaiah was in, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was crying to Tatanzamu. Because, you know, the, it was feeling that, you know, it was like, it was a human also. And as human being, you, you feel, you feel the pain. It was, you could sense that it, this pain will be too much. It will be too much. Then he was praying, he said, Tata, you, you know the question, he asked Tatanzamu. And then the word is like, this is too much. I don't want, I don't want to go through it. In fact, somebody didn't hear him. He had to go through that. And it's the same thing if we compare to this, this thing. 
Elacho was the one responsible, you know, to stop him from going back. Said, no, you can't come here, go back. And it was like, no, no. It was like, no, I won't go back. You know, I don't want to go back to the world anymore because there is a lot of, you know, a, a lot of things that doesn't please me. This is what he said. And he doesn't limit himself here. You know, because he also say that, uh, you know, he already know how this world functioned. Because he was already here. Back on those days, nothing is new for him. Nothing is new. This is why he was like, you refuse. He was like, uh -uh, no, I will not go. Gacha, you know, it was given permission to him. No, you have to go. And he refused. And he was, you know, he has to kick him out in the back. And while he was rumbling, you know, he came to life because he was dead. He, you know, he and his colleagues named Sebastiao, they were dead. Both, both of them, they were dead. His colleague passed away, but he survived. When he came down from the mountain, he wake up. He opened his eyes, as Mama, Mama Tamara read. He was looking to people. You know, and then when they, he was told that Sebastian was dead, you know, he wanted to cry. But he, he called it. He wanted to cry. Both of them. Because pneumonia for kids, you know, is very dangerous sickness. This is true. Indeed. <laughs> this is true. This is happening. Yes. Um, you want Can you go ahead? Uh, um, sorry, okay. uh, Brother Benica. Before oh, okay, Samba. Uh, goes on. Um, this history, it is so powerful that's, that once again shows how powerful was this man, Simone Gonzalez Stock. One of the things that made me be like always laughing when the prophet Elijah asked the prophet, do you know me? And if we check, prophet Elijah will live a million years ago before Simon Toko. And then by that time that Simon Toko died, he was 16 years old, very kid. But in a spiritual world, when he died, when and when he was talking prophet Elijah, that wasn't Simon Toko 16 years old. That was Simon Toko before everything was done or created here in earth. That's why he could recognize who was prophet Elijah when he asked him, do you know me? If Prophet Halaja come to us and ask us this question, we never we're not gonna be able to answer it because we don't know his face, his voice, how he is. But Simon Toko said, Yes, I know you. Because they are always together, as Brother Benika said, and he gave this amazing example, Cruz Congo 2000 years ago. They always walk together. And then in this death, we, from this death, we can understand something very powerful. The power after death. When people die, sometimes they don't die. They go strengthen their power to come back. That thing had to happen for Simon Toko to be strengthened. Because 2,000 years ago, Cruz Congo he wanted to give up. That's why he was always praying in Zambe, give me strength, give me strength. And according to Simon Toko in his letters, he always says this, 
I was always asking to Tatan Zambe to take me from this world because I saw already the thing that I was supposed to go through. That's why in that mountain, he said, no, I don't want to go back there because there is a lot of evils. That was Simon Tokwa in flesh, not the spirit of Tatan Zambe. <laughs> That's why uh, Chris Bakongo said in the cross, Eli, 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 Lama Sabatani, why did you forsake me? Why did you leave me? That was Christ, uh, Jesus. That was as exactly the same scenario that Simon Tok was going through. Nzambe, don't let me go back. And his colleague died, but Simon Toko did not die because his mission was totally different from his colleague. <laughs> that's, so that's the thing that uh, I would like to add in this, in this point. His death was to show the doctor that the kid that you are taking care of is not a normal kid. Death has no power over him. Even though you say he's dead, but he's not dead. Because he has power over the death. That's why that Tanzania made, the doctor said, I'm going to give eight days. But Zambi said, no, if, uh, if he gets well in eight days, the doctor say, I'm very clever. Let me add more days and make the kid die and bring him back to show him that this kid isn't a normal kid. It was also to show to this uh, priest from the Europe that the kid that you are trying to kill, you can do whatever you want, sickness, whatever, you're not gonna die. Yeah, thank you. Tondo Samba, Tondo Masaka. Yes, <laughs> Matamara, you know, point 18, yes. When the doctor arrived to the place, to the place I was, he found the coffin where I was put sick. Then I was put to another room, not hospital. I was assisted inside the evangelic mission. After the second week of treatment, I got recovered, but my classmate passed out. I was older than him for four years. This is my third vision in life, and I still have others that if the Most High allows me, I will tell you soon or later. You already know the vision of Katate. The vision from Katete, you know, I think you already know, we have shared with you, you know, in um, 17 April, uh, 1935, this vision, most of you, most of you, you already know. And he still have a lot of vision. And some other vision he didn't share, you know, because, you know, you get tired when you share a lot of stuff to people and they can't believe you. You say it, you say that, people don't, do not believe. They just believe, I see. When they see, they will say, aha, uh -huh, we believe in you. But when, if you want to work with Tatan Zambi, you don't believe after you see it. You believe my faith. This is why he had a lot of trouble with his follower, because they wanted to see the power that Yes. Um, yes. Before uh, we carry on, but do you have something to add on this? No, no, no. Uh, okay, but on Masaka. So here you go, Matamara. Okay. Order from Tata and Zambi to begin the work. In the year 1942, in an afternoon almost the sunset, a luxurious car parked outside my house and three white men sent by Tata and Zambi got out from it. They brought me the message from Tata and Zambi saying that I have to go back quickly to my home village, Sadi, and later to go to Leopoldville City. And they also said, 
You will feed the lost sheep because of the fresh grass and joy of this world. Revelation 3, 2. And it says, Revelation 3, 2. Be, wa be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before Tata and Zombie. Matthew 10, 6. Matthew 10, 6 says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Isolele. And yet, uh, just before you carry on, Mama Tamara, you know, I'll, I'll give you a break. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> when this thing, this is true. This is true. This happened. There is a lot of incredible stuff that's happened, you know, that it seemed it seems like this is a lie. This is not true, but this is true. It's happened. A car, a very luxurious car. You know, and three white people came out from the car and delivered this message to him. And they mentioned this, this book, Revelation and, and, and Matthew. You know, and when, you know, and when the missionaries saw that, whoa, there is another stuff that, uh, you know, they said when they saw those three men. You know, Matamara, I'll give you a break. Let me, uh, let me invite, uh, um, okay. uh, sister, 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 sister Keisha, are you there? I want to hear from everybody, you know. <laughs> I'm here. Oh, okay. Are you, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, sister, you will carry on, please, if you don't mind, on the point in 23. 23. At the next day, the missionaries were asking me where those visitors came from, and I say to them that I didn't know them. Then they said, you know that type of car is not from this world and you know who those three people are. We just wanted to tell you that you don't have to participate yourself, to, preci to precipitate yourself with your mission because your time has not arrived yet. Because the time that we were given has not reached to the end yet. I replied to them saying, thank you very much. I thought that I was the only one who noticed the presence of these people. After all, the missionaries also saw them. After all, the missionaries also saw them. Yes, Matano Masaka. This is what happened. When those men show up, you know, they came to, to talk to him. And the missionary also saw the cars. You know, back on those days, the missionary, they were everywhere. In other words, you know, some of them, as we, as we said, you know, last time, you know, they were there to like to control him, to check every move he make. And when they ask about these men, who are these men? As Montoko said, no, I don't know them. And they already knew, as Montoko, you know, knew those men. This is why they said, you know, they said, you know, ah, you know that type of car is not from this world. And you know very well who those three men, you know, were or were. They said, you know very well, because they knew who this Simon Toko was. They knew. The Mundele, they knew who Simon Toko was. And then they said, 
who just want to tell you, blah, blah, blah. This is what they said. Those three men, the type of car was very funny car. You know, when something doesn't belong to this world, you can sense. You will say that, no, something's, something's not right. This car hmm, is not from this world. Even people, if somebody approaches you, you know, in a very uncommon way, you will realize that this is somebody else. It's not a common person. So this is what the missionary told them after you received a message from these three people. And you know, um, the elders that work with Simon Toko back on those days, they used to see a lot of stuff. Sometime you are working with him, you know, there was a day, it was, you know, um, this elder, elder uh, that Daniel Kaombo, he was driving him, you know, it was in Luanda, and out of nowhere, he said, hey, hey, nephew. He liked to, you know, he liked to call people nephew. Yeah, and nephew stopped the car. And the car stopped. And somebody came out of nowhere. An elder also. But, you know, the people that were in the car, they didn't know the man. He said, stop the car. And he, you know, he, um, he, lower, he opened the window of, this, of his car. You know, and the men just came and they were talking funny language. You know, those language from above. Oh, oh I mean, the, you know, the nephew, he, he already know this Simon Tok is full of misery. He was just listening. It was the, the nephew and the, there was a lady also. He was his Simon Toko secretary. Yeah. He was talking to these men. They were talking for a long time. And then he said, okay, okay, oh, okay, okay. In other words, yeah, it's fine. Okay, go, go well. And the man went away. And then someone took, asked, do you know what we were talking about? And the lady said, but oh, what do you? Do you is like uncle, you know? Just call uncle. Someone took uncle. What do you? Oh, uncle. But how come shall we know the language that you are speaking, that you were speaking if we don't know this language? We don't know this kind of language. And we, we, we know that it's not from here. And Simon Toko said, ah, okay, very good. This man is very old prophet that lived years, you know, thousand and thousand years ago. He came from far, just came to deliver a message and he, he went away. <laughs> you know, people were like, oh, this thing, you know, it was too much, yeah. Some stuff like you will be like, you will say, no, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. But especially the driver, Elder, you know, Daniel Kaombu, yeah, he passed away just a few months ago. He said, you know, he, already, he was just laughing because he had, he, you, know, he, you know, he saw a lot. He saw a lot. And this is what Montoko said about this man. Do you want to add something? Uh, yes. Uh, continue, <laughs> uh, That is really funny when we don't know much about the history, but for us that are coming to this Bant Awakening, it is amazing because <laughs> Simon Toko is a full of secrets and the Bible is still alive. That's the same thing happened to Abraham when the angels they were coming to visit him. They were a normal man, but Abraham uh, could re recognize or not that the person that I'm talking with, they're not from this world. They came to deliver me a message. That the same thing happened to Simon Toko when those three uh, white men came to talk with Simon Toko. Zambi has is finding ways to communicate with people. If that time he could use a, a three a black men, the missionary could not believe. That's why he sent a, a three white men so that the, the missionary could see. But only Simon Toko and the missionary were able to see other people around 
they were not seeing anything. That was more much of a spiritual things happening. That's why Simon Toko said, oh, I thought I was the only one I saw the three men. But Nzambe opened the missionary eyes for them to confirm that the kid that you are taking care of is my son. And the missionary were trying to advise Simon Toko, no, don't start yet your work because they were afraid of Simon Toko. If Simon Toko could start working in that moment, the missionary work could be over. And then this thing happening. 1949, when the Wanda Villa came to Africa, the church of the missionary that were full before, they were getting empty because Simon Toko was attracting, was taking all the people to him. So they knew this man is so powerful. If we leave him to start his, his work now, we're going to lose power. We're not going to have nothing to teach, nothing to do, because he holds all the power with him, in him. So another things to learn from this, um, this part, we have to be very careful when somebody is advising us. Some advice is to stop us, not to achieve our goals. And then the missionary way they were doing this, Simon Toko, don't start yet. Oh, look what they said, because the time that we were given is not reached to the end yet. They knew that the time was about to finish because Chris Bakong himself was among them. Who can do better than him? No one else. So <laughs> those three men, look three, Munankumbu, Three. They were they came to confirm his mission and Coco, your time is yet is really arrived. Go and start. Where was that? In Congo. Where the Holy Spirit came in Congo, where he cre created the Kibokolo choir in Congo. <laughs> so, Nzambi knows he has his, his ways to communicate to all of us. Ngeta. Ngeta, Tuna Masaka, brother Tusamba. You know, it just mentioned something very important, you know, this is one of the things that the three, uh, you know, white people, white men said, um, you know, they said, you later on, you will have to go to, to Congo. And Congo, you know, now known as the Republic of Congo, is where everything started, in Congo. In 1949, Congo is the place where the Muanda Nsemi, the Muanda Velela, came in, in Africa in a massive way. You know, for the world, the Moana was already, was always here. But what the Tanzania revealed, you know, say something else. That is the place where the Moana came in a massive way. This is why if you research, you will see that a funny thing happened, a very amazing, amazing event took place in Congo. You know, we heard from Elder, you know, Bayern last, last session, 1949. The Belgium government, the colonizer, they saw something, you know, powerful happening there in Congo. They fought with Seraphim and, and, uh, and, and Cherubian. They, they fought with them and they couldn't defeat them. They just saw small beings, you know, lifting the truck, the military truck, and destroy all, you know, Belgium stuff. This is true. 
there is a lot of evidence. If you travel to Congo and if you ask about this, they will tell you that the man that was behind this in charge was a black man, Smonto. He was the man, you know, he was the, the, he was the man in command of the, that, that army. Small being, small. Cherugian and Seraphim. And in 1960, Congo became independent. The Belgium, they went back to, to Belgium. This is the power that you have. This is the power that we have. But this thing went to Tanzania, Laos, you know, Tanzania sometimes is, you know, is a bit slow to anger. This is why sometimes we, you know, we cry out to him and we see like nothing is happening, but yes, he's powerful and he's able to, to make, you know, funny stuff happen. Yes. Um, Brother Elson, can you please read for us, you know, the next point? If you, if you, if you available, you available, brother? Yes, thank you. A point okay. 24. I replied to them saying, thank you very much. I thought that I was the only one who noticed the presence of this people. After all, the missionaries also saw them. Revelations to the first members of Kibokolo Choir. Just a second, brother. Okay. You know, these brothers from Kibokolo, this Kibokolo was a choir, choir, choir group, you know, composed by 12 people. Only 12. Plus Montoko 13, Kibokolo Choir. And this is the choir that Montoko was, you know, was leading while he was in a Baptist church. You know, and in 1949, when he invited this, you know, this, this guy from his choir to go to, to join to his house, you know, plus some, some, some people, in total, there were 30, 30, 30, 35. That's where the Muanda came in a massive way. Everything started with this Kibokolo choir, 12 men, 12 people. Guess what? After that, they went back to Baptist church and it was just a choir member. You know, but when he was leading the, just leading the choir by singing, a lot of people in Congo, they were joining the Baptist church. And especially when the Baptist priest, the missionary, give him time to preach, oh, it was fire. When he was preaching, you know, we preach, we use, you know, the language of colonizer, English, Portuguese, you know, whatever language, but we also use our own language, Bantu, Bantu language. And this language is powerful. When he was preaching, he was attracting a lot of people. And the missionary were like, but when we preach, nobody comes. But when this black guy is preaching, a lot of people are coming. What's wrong with him? And they said, Simon Toko, tell us, we, you know, why are you using witchcraft here in church? I was um, like, no, I'm not, I'm not using witchcraft. I'm preaching the same word you preach. I'm praising the same God of Tanzania you serve. And they just come. So there's nothing else. And they say, no, you have something else you don't want to tell us. And later on, the missionary, they discover the Vatis. The Vatis, they were those people who were taken by Muanda Velila. Were mighty people that were busy performing a lot of miracles in the village. And when the missionaries saw that, they said, ah, these guys, these African people, they are doing witchcraft. And they went to report to the Belgium government that these black guys, they are causing disorder in the society. And all of them, they got arrested. Mm. They were put in jail, all of them. Yes. 
a brother, so you can carry on. And this revelation is the re is the revelation, just a second, brother. This revelation is the revelation that Simon Choko told the members of this choir. Mm. You know, Isaiah Congo Beko in those days, he wasn't revealing himself to everybody. He, al he always had a private meeting where he will be, you know, revealing all the secret. Mm. And in this private meeting, that, what, that was the moment he asked his disciple, you know, who do you think I am? You know, and your, your, your Anne, Peter, he said, you know, you are the Messiah, the son of the Tanzania. It was in private meeting, not in public. Mm -hmm. So this thing, Simon Toko, you reveal also to his followers. Hey, brother Samba, you wanted to add something? Uh, thank you, brother. <laughs> yeah, um, regarding to the jealous of the, the missionary, when, as I was saying before, they knew that the time was about to finish. So that's why they, they were advising Toko not to start yet. So when they saw Toko moving, doing his work, they were not afraid. And when somebody's afraid, you're going to try to do everything to stop you. So the thing that they did to stop Simon Toko, his brother Ebenika said, is to report them to the authority. And amazing thing that happened, that the Belgian government has decided to put Simon Toko to the prison himself alone. So since the power that someone talk was preaching, or oh, the words, the thing that was preaching was so powerful, people were able to see, was giving them hope and make him, making them to understand that we are Muntu. We have power. This is our land. And we are Bana Nzambi. So all the people in that congregation, they offer themselves to go to the prison as well. So there were no more space in the prison. <laughs> Look, family. There were no more space in the prison. So the Belgian government now were also afraid, who is this man who is doing all this thing? Even people are giving themselves to suffer for him. And in that time, Prophet Simon uh, Kimbangu heard in Lumbumbashi, because it was in Lumbumbashi, he heard, hey, there is another Simon who's doing the thing that you were doing. And Prophet Kimbangu said, whoa, thank you, Matondo. Because I was waiting for this moment Nzambe told me, when you hear another Simon doing the same thing that I'm doing, is your time. You can go. You can come to me. You can die. And Kimbango said to his disciple, when you guys hear in Kinshasa, another province of Congo, because Congo is a lot of province, one of them is Kinshasa, Lubumbashi. When you hear in Kinshasa, a man called Simon doing the same miracle that I, Kim, Simon, was doing, he is the one more powerful than me. I just came to prepare the way. He is the one that Nzambe is sent to deliver us. So the Belgian government was so afraid because there were no more space in the prison. So that's why they decided to take Simon Toko back to his own village. An amazing thing, the Kibokolo Choir, as Brother Benika said, it was uh, 12 young men from Angola. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, Mama Brenda. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I thought I was on mute. I'm so sorry. No, no problem. <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> Those 12 young men from Angola, we, we used to call them 
Bazombos. They are the one who started with this Tokoist church. Back on the days, Chris Bacon had how many disciples? <laughs> how many a family? How many disciples that Chris Bacon had back on the Twelve. days? Twelve. Uh, Twelve. 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 So is that a coincidence? In nowadays, in his second time, he's starting his work with 12 people from his own country. 12, again. Down there, we're gonna now see what he, he'll be revealing to, to his disciple. Thank you. Samba. You know, I mentioned a very, a very important point. Thank you very much, brother. I mentioned about these 12 people. You know, this is what, if you remember last session, we said this in the light of Simon Toko said. He's, he asked the question, you know, when Isaiah Kongo ascended to heaven, went to heaven, the, who were present? He said, you know, the only people that saw him living was his disciple. So will be his coming. This is what he said. This is why I mentioned about 12. When he went up, those disciples saw him living. And he asked in this letter, so when he will come back, do you think all the world, you know, will be seen? Him coming, he said, the same way he left, that will be the same way he will come back. You know, this caused a lot of question in mind. This cause has a lot of question in our mind. Like, how come? Because if you read the Bible, you will see like, you know, Bible said in Matthew, cloud and mention all those stuff. So there is a reason, you know, he said that. Because if you even read, you know, check the Bible properly, you, you, you will see that say, Saya Congo will be like a thief. You know, a thief like coming when he comes into your house, sometimes you will not notice. I remember when I was a kid, you know, a thief entered into our house. He made a lot of noise. He, he broke the, 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 the window and we didn't realize. We didn't hear anything. You know, they eat off on food. <laughs> they eat off food. They did whatever they wanted to do. If they took a lot of stuff, the, the TV, the radio, you know, yeah, and a lot of stuff, and they left. And we didn't realize. In the morning when we woke up, we're like, oh, where's the TV? It's gone. Everything went, you know, was gone. And this is how we say it. I will come like a thief. In other words, it will come hidden. Yes, just before we proceed, Elder Kennedy, please, I see, I see your hand. Yeah, I wanted to know, the 12 yeah. disciples, are they, are they the same disciples who were there 2,000 years ago? Ah, uh, <laughs> you know, see, Elder, Brother Ellison will, will answer your question by, by the next point. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. He's there. Thank you. Yes, Elder, uh, Elder, uh, Brother Allison, are you there? Yes. Okay, you can proceed with the reading. This is what Toko said to his disciples. I came, I am he who has come before. Now I also come to you. And all those who worked with me in the past also came with me again. I brought them with me, but you don't know yourselves. Many of you have already worked with me in the past and my team was not arbitrary. Only I know you, but you do not know me. Neither you know who you are. Wow, Matondo. Elder Kennedy, is there any, is there any hint? 
Yeah, I'd I had seen that uh, verse, and that's why it aroused my curiosity to know oh, more. Yes. 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 Thank you very much. You know, nothing is new under the sun. Nothing is new. This is why he said, I know all of you, but you do not know me, and you do not know yourself. This is what he said. He said, I know all of you, but you do not know yourself. You know, when we joined this awakening, when we were seeing, you know, in Papa Zola session, when we looked to you, every, you know, all of you in diaspora, in Africa, in whatever place you were, we could see something amazing. I was telling brother to some, oh my goodness, these brothers and sisters, they're full of the Holy Spirit. They are very spiritual people. And I was saying, you know, this is a Vati, this is a Sia. And, you know, I was like, no, this is my mom, my mom, Lorinda, she has something. You know, she has something. She was always smiling. I was like, she has something. When I heard from, you know, uh, you know, Mama Brenda, you know, Papa Zola, you know, Stashendeya, Lakesha King, you know, Mama Linda, you know, I, I, I can go on to, uh, with the list. But a lot of you, when I saw you know, I could sense, because this is what we see in our talk with the community. We saw the power that we have, that you have, until one day this power was manifested in a powerful way, in a mighty way. After a session, we stayed, you know, from... Um, I think half past 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Because the Mwanda took over some of you, the Mwanda, one prophet and one angel enter into your body to give us a message. You know the power that you have? Luna, you know, Luna, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Yengolo. Voingeye Luna Yetulendo Mpungo. So you are extremely powerful. You are. And the, 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 the sad part is that some, you know, we don't know some of our ability. We do not know. We do not know. This was Montauk, we just it was locking to them. And said, I know all of you. Some of you, some of you in this call, some of you are prophets. Some of you are angels. Some of you, you are. I don't know, Sister Randy. Sister Randy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Please, Sister, if yes. you don't mind. <laughs> Can you, you, you shared once again last time, you know, can you share once again what you said to Prince Michael? Can you say about the vision you had? Yes, um, yes, um, I saw Prince Michael and I apologized to him because in that moment, um, I realized that I was, um, in, um, how you say, uh, I was a, uh, a Malaki, um, that that was my um, mission here on the earth. Um, and I was apologizing to him because um, I wasn't here doing my duties. I let fear overtake me. And um, my mission was to um, loose the angels on the earth. And yes. when he looks at me, he always looks at me very stern. Say again, sister. He's always looking at me like when um, he looks, he always looks very stern. Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Yes. And what did you say, sister? I, I didn't I didn't say any I didn't say anything because I saw him many times and I didn't know it was him until just recently. Wow. 
atong na basaka system. You see, yeah. and we can go with the testimony. There's a lot of testimony. This is the vision she had. She saw it. And Michael was like, are you doing what you're supposed to do? Like you have to discover who you are. You have to seek more that Tanzania for him to reveal who you are. And we say some of you are prophet. Some of you are angels. Some of you have the power to heal. Have the power to do, to prophesy and to say mighty stuff. Some of you, you have. We said recently we, we received a message, you know, from somebody who is there in the diaspora. The message, the one that spoke, and we listen. This is the power that you have. All that the Tanzani wants is tino mambi se nuizi kwa iskaka is to for us to keep on, you know, uh, purify ourselves, run away from evil. So that our gift must be refined. So that we might we might must be discovered who we truly are. And this is what we want to say to these people. And this is the song that you know that he wrote himself. Mvungudi watusila in silo. Oh mvuluzi. It is all Vuluzi, our Savior. What to Silan Silu, you promise us that Vungunza Zikwiza Omunsi. You promise us that, you know, prophet will count on earth or to earth. You promise us, Tatan Zambi, that prophet will come to earth. That's the promise. Oh, Vulzi, oh, Savior, Tatan Zambi. What to Sila Nsilu Mukwiza Sola Wana Isayele. You promise us that you will choose the children of Isolele. Simon Toku. Was praying to Tatanzam and said, "You promise that you 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 know you you will choose the children of Isolele, oh Mvuluzi, oh Savior. What to Silansilu? You promise us that Vonzenza Zikwiza Omunsi. You say that foreigners will come to our land. That's a prophecy." Then he said, Za Zinanzeza Edibequizira Muquiza Sola Avauki Andi Ovanza. Those visitors will come to choose the selected people on earth. He was crying to them that. You know, you please fulfill your promise. You say it. That's a very powerful song. And what touched me the most is that, you know, the promise that he said, he said, Tatanzambi, Tatanzambi, you, you promise that you will send prophets on earth. And right now we have a list. We have a document where we have all the name of the prophet. That's allowed to come, all of them. That's, that's a decree from the king from above. We have a decree, a document, which is written all the name of the angels and the prophet that's allowed to come. Not all of them allowed to, especially to talk. Some of them they can come, but not 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 speak. All of them they they are here. All of them. They can use this is good news. They can use your body. They can use your husband's body, your, 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 your wife. They can use your children. They can use anybody, including those who are rebelling against the Tanzama. Because the Tanzama like those kind of people who doubt a lot. Like Paul, you know, Paul was fighting against the Tanzama. The Tanzama used him. Those prophets, Enoch, 
Abraham, Noah, Isaiah, they are here right now. We can sense them, even though we can't see them, but they are here and they are right there where you are. This is the power that we moon to, black people we have. And you know, that love is merciful. It, it doesn't mean just, you know, we the black people, we are the only one who can enjoy from this blessing. Everybody, this is open for everybody who believe. Because Simon, you know, Simon Toku is not against color. He's against the system that the European impose. He's against the system that everybody who acknowledge and confess, yes, they will be they will be having the same grace also that we have. Powerful. Oh, yes. um, uh, if I may, while Brother Benico was was speaking, actually that is the most the spiritual moment of, of our service today, this point 25 is the higher point of our service, dear family. And the song came to me. I'm not good in singing, but I'll try. It says as follows. coming to ask Mama Shandeya to pray for us, if you don't mind. Hallelujah. And to sing the song that you, you always sing, the one that calls the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Mama Laurinda can pray where you are as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, holy, holy, ayun zambi. Mama Shandaya, can you pray please? Hallelujah. Tata and Zambi. Almighty, we bow down in your presence and we exalt your name. We give you all thanks and we honor you. We exalt you, Father and Savior. We come and we say thank you. For you are glorious, you are mighty, and you are worthy of all praise. And we come to be in your presence. We come to be lifted up in you. We come asking for your giftings, your power to be released upon those who are listening, those whose hearts are set upon you, for you know our hearts. May your presence move upon us and through us. Release upon us any doubt that we may have had. May you remove and strengthen us. Strengthen us. 
of us walk gloriously as you anoint our path. Light up our paths that our footsteps walk and sink in unity in you. All glory and might unto you. Rain down your blessings and your increase upon your people. As it is written, it is so. Every promise that has been promised, it unfolds now. Your truth, your blessings, your increase comes. So we listen attentively to your very word as it is we lead. We listen and we humble before you to move as you move, to speak as you speak in your power in your anointing, and in your favor. Place upon our very hearts your words of truth, unity, that we may carry out the very mission that you have sent us for to do. All honor and glory unto you. Kosi amokosi. You are our king. King of kings, you reign and you rule forever. Glory, almighty, glory. Hallelujah. 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 I believe everyone could feel this spiritual moment where you are. I felt it. The presence of the Mwanda Belala. I believe you also felt it. Nzambe was touching you. Nzambe visited you. Brother Benik, if you may please go back in the point 25. He said something powerful here. Point 27. Uh, and my team was not arbitrary or oh, my selection in the other version said my selection was not arbitrary only i know but you don't know me neither you know who you are and then say it in point 26 i came i am who I has come before. Oh. This is so personal for me, for my family. 
because Simon Toko said it to my great, great, great mother, Ntumban Kenga. And they said, Ntumban Kenga used it not to believe on Simon Toko. <laughs> Tumban Kenga was one of the women that he, he didn't know nothing about Simon Tok. So to put the story short, she, she decided to go to Luanda, the capital city of Angola, to her children's or her daughter house. And one of the days, Simon Toko decided just to go in that house. And then she found Dumban Kenge. <laughs> and Simon Toko told her, do you know me? Dumban Kenge said, no. And Dumban Kenge said, no, I don't know you. And Simon Toko was just laughing. <laughs> if you knew, you could say yes. <laughs> And Simon Toko just went, and then Ntumban Kenga asked her to her daughter, who is this man? And the daughter was surprised. Oh, mama, don't you know who is Tio, Simon? Because back on the days, the, the days we used to call him Tio, uncle. Don't you know who is Tio, Simon? They said, no, mama. It's still you, Simon, the prophet, the great prophet. Say, so, I don't know this man. Why he said he, sh he knows me? So Simon talked on the following day, went there again. In Tumban Kenge, do you know me again? She, she said, no. I said, okay, it's fine. While Tumban Kenge was sleeping, Simon talked appeared to her in the face of 2,000 years ago with a Bible and it was given to her, take it and go back to your own village and preach because this is your mission because you have done it before and you're gonna do it again. You want Tumban Kenge, translating a name was Madalena. And Madalena was the one who were with Cruz Congo 2,000 years ago. <laughs> and they say, you worked with me. Your time now, and, uh, and you came back to work with me. She was seeing it on a dream. While when she woke up in the morning, Simon Tok went to her house and then asked her again, did you see me? <laughs> and she, and she, she was so surprised. Oh, my goodness. You were Cruz Bakongo. And then Simon Toko said, you said it. Simon Toko took the Bible and gave her, take his Bible. The same thing she saw in the dream Simon Toko was doing to her. She said, I am who I am. I was with you in Tumba Kang 2000 years ago. Now go back to your own village and preach. This is your mission. And in the point 26, Simon Tok is saying, all of you were with me. You just came. The angels, they always confirm, you guys don't know who you are. You think that it's just you, Tusamba, just you, Mama Tamara, just you, Brother Allison, Brother Shande, Sister Shandeya. No, the one who is in you existed before. You are so powerful. Cruz Congo came back and then his spirits living in you. The same way Tumban Kenga was brought back to her mission and she did it nicely. Mama Randy, you, you have to do it nicely because he is waiting for us to accomplish it. 
my selection is not arbitrary. He knew, he know us. That's why he chose us to come together. Do you think that is in vain for us to be here and to have this strong connection? <laughs> I can feel strong connection when I talk to you. You think that it, it comes just out of the blue? No, it's Zambe. Because our spirits, as we always say, our spirit, they are always connected since day one. And today, when we are always in Zoom session, they just get very happy because they come always together. Dear family, I'm gonna add more stuff in the point 29. But so far, that's what I wanna say. We are not here in vain. As Simon Toko showed to Tumbankeng a mission, today he is showing to you that you are not in vain in Bantu awakening. You have a great mission. Use your power. Look, Mama Laurinda started saying in the beginning, the powerful, the power that is in us. Because <laughs> is so amazing that he revealed things. So thank you family for now. I'm going to stop here. Matando Masaka, brother. Nakumba say, you want to get a get a matondo mingi. Oh, so let's carry on, you know. Um, so, point eight, and my team was not, uh, was not arbitrary. Only I know you but you do not know me. Neither you know who you are. Brother Ellison, are you there? Yes, Brother Benika. Okay, let's carry on. But I know you since the beginning, but also all those spirits that fought against me in the past also came again to contradict me. As happened in the past, so it will be in this time. Because all that has happened in the past, the wars that the disciples have troubled, are the same that we are living. And all the spirits of that time that tormented to destroy the work were born again and came even to make the work of Kuswa difficult. The work of these evil spirits is to destroy. In other words, what Toko said is that following the death of Yesaya, Yesu Kaka, wicked people persecuted and killed many people from Embassy, a Congo, the Atotela kingdom. Yes, brother, just a second. You know, Yesu Kaka, you know, uh, Isaiah for us has a, has a lot of different names. We call him Vungudi, Mazieze, Vira Kazaku, Mbangudi Mbumba, Yesu, Mfumu Yesu. Isaiah Congo, Kuswa Congo, Yesu Kaka. Oh. And if you, you know, if you add J here, no, Yesu, in Latin, that's the word for Jesus. This is what they did. Oh. In Kikongo, it's like this, Yesu. It's Yesu. Yesu is, is Isaiah. They took why put J? Jesu in Latin, Jesu. And if you add S, Jesus, this is what they did. Yes, go ahead, brother. Uh, 
others drifted from the principles taught by Yesu and his apostles. The apostles were killed and priesthood authority, including the keys to direct and receive revelation for the kingdom was taken from earth because the Dibuindu, Dibundu, Dibundo church was no longer led by the Muanda Villela. Therefore, error crept into the teachings of the Bundo church where few good people in truth remain, but the Nikanda word as established by Yesaya was lost. This period is called the great apostasy. Amos 8, 11 and 12 reads, Look, the days are coming, declares Tatanzambi, when I will send a famine into the land, not a famine for bread or thirst for water, but for hearing the words of Tatanzambi. They will stagger from sea to sea and from north to the east. They will rove about searching for the word of Tatanzambi but they will find not. Yes. Just a second, brother, before you carry on. I saw a question there, the meaning of kaka. You know, mama, mama royal. Kaka is the word for grandfather. You know, kaka. Like is the word for grandfather. You know, grandmother, grandfather, we just say kaka. So, you know, Isaiah, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in Isaiah 6, 9, you know, he is described as Mbanda Mbanda. Mbanda Mbanda is marvelous counselor. You know, that's one of the quality he has. So in English, they say mar marvelous counselor. But in Kikongo, we say Mbanda Mbanda. That, that you know, Isaiah Congo. Mbanda Mbanda and Mbanda Mbanda is an ancient person, you know, is a person, you know, that lived in the past, long time ago, and is full of wisdom and knowledge and life experience. Bandamanda is a person that has already existed from the past, like Tatanzam, can say Bandamanda, you know, because he is just he is. So that's Kaka. But the Masaka, your brother, go ahead. This apostasy resulted in the formation of many churches with conflicting teachings. During this time, many men and women sought the truth, but they were not able to find it. Many good people believed in Tata Nzambi and Yesu and tried to understand and teach truth but they did not have the full Nikanda of priesthood, authority from the Netinu Sadi, Yo Muanda Vilela. Ingeta, you know, Nkanda is the word. You know, we like to use our own term. Those, those are key words. Nkanda is like the Nkanda Nzambe, it's word of Tatanzam. You know, and Netinu Sadai. You know, that's another description to Tatanzambe. Because in Tino is a, is a king, you know, royal, priesthood, priest. Tino Sadai, that's another name for Tatanzambe. And one of the love, of course, you already know. Yes, go ahead, brother. Uh, brother Menika, if I may, yes, sir. I also have uh, something on point 29 uh, up to, to, 13, uh, to 13. Something powerful there, family. That they say, uh, but I know you since the beginning. 
this part, Simon Toko was talking in a highly spiritual way. They're saying, I know you since the beginning. It is a confirmation once again that the spirits never die. The spirit is always alive. It confirms that nothing in the world as moon to human being were not created as other things, other creation of Zambi. The way we were created is to live forever. Zambi created us and put his living spirit in us. Uh, the easy way to explain this is like what the world is doing now. Microsoft, Apple, Samsung. A cell phone has two things, software and hardware. You can destroy the hardware, but the software will still operating. You can take out this, hard, this software and put in, in another hardware, all the information that was in the old phone gonna go in the new phone. But the spirits can, can come back that the software use another hardware, use you and me. That's why I say, it, you guys don't know you. I know you since the beginning is a spirit that was speaking in that moment. <laughs> it is <laughs> amazing when we, we, we start about this banto about Simon Toko, just makes us to understand that we are so powerful in a such a way when we die, we are not dead. The software is still operating. Because Nzambe said, I will give my living spirit to this and you live. And my question is, why they don't die? Because it, Nzambe put it his spirit. And the spirit of Nzambe does never die. <laughs> That's the explanation. That's why uh, he said, you were working with me. And today in this generation, you are also working with me again. It just, Tatanzam just brought back the same spirit to them that was written in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 9. Nothing is new under the sun. What is happening now happened a long time ago. What we are living is a continuation of the process of something that started long time ago. Thank you, family. Matando Masaka, Tim Samba, and Elder Albine just mentioned something, you know, he said in his language also, you know, um, Kaka is the same thing. You know, he said, I found many words, as you can see on the chat. So Bantu is one. Yes, uh, and, uh, you know, as we were reading, his brother Alison, we were reading, so this apostasy was, is, in other words, was a confusion. It was a confusion. And you already know the history, you know the rest. Catholic Church, you know, back on those days, all this, those, those fighting there. This is the confusion. And what this confusion caused, Brother Ellison, point 37. As a result, each generation inherited a state of apostasy as people were influenced by what previous generations passed on, including changes to the words of Mufumu Yisu. However, the first 
who received this word did it endure on it. And due to strong persecutions and deaths they faced, they were not able to conserve my teachings in full until they omitted my own name due to fear and satanic attacks. That was another time. Now I have come to put back the redemptive work in this part of the world. This is why I came to you. And at this time, you're going to have to set my name standing in its true dimension. Ingeta Matondo Masaka. This is his determination. You know, everything that we say, there is an evidence. This is why back on those days, we, we like to say, you know, it doesn't matter how sweet we speak, you know, if you go to court and there is no evidence, you will be arrested. And everything that Simon Toko said, there is evidence. There is evidence. This is what happened back in 2000 years ago. This is what he said. He said, you know, um, he said that the, the bundu, the bundu is the word they describe for, for church. You know, but it's something powerful in church. He said that the bundu has already came, has already come three times on earth, three times. First of all, it came on the, on the time of the prophet. They killed all the prophet. Second time, on the time of the disciples. He came, he taught the disciples, they killed all the disciples. They destroyed everything and they took over. And you know, when you take, took over something you don't know, you will be operating, but you will be lim limited by the information you will be reading. There will be nothing from above. This is why most of you, you left Christianity. You left the religion, why? Because you can't, you know, you can't, you can't feed in that con congregation because all that, that the pastor say is it comes from him himself. You just read, you go to internet, you search some stuff, and you come deliver to you. You know, and the prophecy that you speak, you know, you just repeat from the Bible. The same, there's nothing new. This is why you were like, oh no, forget about the religion. I quit Christianity. And this is why we're here. <laughs> why? Because of those confusion, apostasy. The Catholic, you know, the history of Catholic Church, they took over. The primitive Christian, I'm not saying the, the fake one, I'm saying the original one, the primitive Christian, the black people, including Paul. Paul was a black man. You know, they took over. And when they took over, you know, they, they do not understand nothing about spirituality. Even back on those times, when our ancestors were sent to, into slavery, not here, but there, you know, in, 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 in uh, uh, how do you call this, Mesopotamia, you will see Matthew, you know, when our sisters went there. Later on, when they seen again, they were taken as a slave. And somebody else, that, that's where the time the foreigners, those white Jews, they took over. They, this is in the Bible. They took over the place, right? But the way they were practicing, you know, spirituality was in a very weak way. And that was, I mean, was cursing them. And they were forced to ask the king that took our people to send some priest who know, you know, the word. They operate in flesh. They do not understand nothing. They do not understand. Even the sing that they sing, you can't feel any spirituality. But if we sing, if we sing, black people, if we sing, oh, you will see like this man, oh, he knows what, he, what he's singing. And the sing, you know, has a meaning, has a, has a deep meaning. Oh, isokunazione, yike kalanga, 
You know, there is a meaning when we sing. So that was the time in the great apostle, that was the time they took over. And because of those confusion, they split themselves, confusion they divided. And this guy, you know, Martin Luther, he rose, you know, and a lot of churches came into existence. This is why everything is messed up. You looked at the world. And the body just opened a church. You know, you sleep and then you woke up. I'll, I'll open my own church. But like, who I am to, to open my own church? And then, you, you, you know, I will be the pastor. And if you come from outside to contradict me, I will take you out from my church. This is how it function outside. You, you, you are witness. If you, go, if you prophesy, they will chase you out. Why? Because the pastor owns the church. But in our talk with the community, the Mwanda, Tatanzami, owns the church. It doesn't matter if you are reverend, if you are bishop, if you are pastor. If a kid, if a kid, or even a woman, if the Mwanda use them to advise you to what you're doing as a pastor, as a bishop, and tell you to sit down, you have to sit down. We obey. We obey. This is a a witness. Doesn't matter if you're pastor or, you know, bishop or whatever. Doesn't matter. A kid even 10 years old. If we see that the kid is a valley and the man to take over, the kid will be speaking word of wisdom. And if still the pastor sit down, the pastor must sit down. Because we know that Tanzania is in charge. This is how it works. And this is the prophecy of Simon Tov. This time, they destroyed the, you know, the Dibundu two times. But on the third time, they will be not able. Even though he went through what he went, you know, Simon Toko. He was a very <laughs> strange man, weird man. You know the history, you know, there is a YouTube, there is a video from uh, child, uh, child, uh, you know, Ruth, something like that, an organization which is attached to CIA. Many of you have seen the video. They say they killed Simon Toko. They shot him in pieces, but he didn't die. And not just that, there is even a lot. Which, brother, listen, we will read, which is the final point. I don't know, brother Samba, just before we go, if you got something to add. Okay, brother Elson. This is Masivi Nekakululua. Nekakululua. Masivi is like a miracle from a person who is not able to be destroyed. CV is like a miracle, you know, CV is like a miracle. So Nekakululua, we already shared with you, is a person that is not able to be destroyed. Those are the names they call Simonto. This is history. So, and this is what he, he, he said, Simonto. Go ahead, brother. Masivi Nekakululua. I did not expect to receive mistreatment by the hands of my own compatriots, nor have the Portuguese colonizers reached this point. But I tell you the truth, that in the way that you have smashed me and dismayed my body, so this country will also be smashed and crumbled. Therefore, the chains of Tatanzambi and Yisu are over. If anyone among us is arrested, it will not be because of the word of Tatan Zambi, but because of another cause to which he is involved. I will never die. Whatever methods to be used by the rulers or people of this world, I will never die. From now on, Tatan Zambi's prisons are over. I, Simu, who came into the world to suffer for you, have fulfilled all the chains that Satan had in store for the torment of Tatan Zambi's people. And as I left, I closed all the doors 
of the chains. Therefore, from this moment on, the word of Tatanzambi will multiply and Tatanzambi will bless his Dibundo. Ingeta. Oh, but it was a long conversation, you know. Matanamasaka, Brother Ellison, you know, the point that he stated at the beginning was what, you know, sometimes, you know, the problem of us, you know, let me say about African people, particularly speaking, is the vision. I like when Sister Shundem pray about that, the vision. You know, when the, 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 when the colonizer left, our own people in Angola, because the first president started in, he did his study in, you know, in Portugal and Russia, you, you know. And, you know, those countries, well, well, it was all about communism. And it was taught Marxism and Leninism. No, that, no, you know, the president, when he came down to Angola, he said, from now on, nobody will speak about God. Nobody will be speak about Tatanzabe, nobody. So Simon Toko was like, what? <laughs> we will see that. And this guy and Simon Toko, they grew up together. They grew up together. They were friends. And Simon Toko was the one who prophesied that he will be president in the future. But because he knew Simon Toko would not listen to him, he started persecuting him. He ordered people to cut him and beast him, you know, a lot of prison. This is why he said, you know, I did not expect to receive this treatment by the hand of my own compatriot, my own people. I did not expect this. And our own people, you know, they went even far away. They killed a lot of talkless people, they killed. There was a time back in those days, it was, a, you know, it was like, it, let me say, it was a crime to become a terrorist. Because we dress in white. We used to, you know, to dress like some, some, somebody else. And whenever they see, because they had a, they had a spire, they used to spy us. When they found out that you are terrorist, they will arrest you, they will beat you, they will kill you. This is true, this is happening. Recently, I think it was this year or last year, the president of Angola, the current president, you know, he apologized publicly for the killing that the former president, you know, the first president did in the past. And especially, particularly the talk with that they killed. He mentioned this, the president of the country. Because they were behind this Montoko and his followers. You know, they burn a tabernacle. I think it was in the south part or north part of Angola. They burn a tabernacle made out of, you know, wood, you know, in the village, the way they will build their house. You know, children, young people, and the elders, they were inside the tabernacle and praying. This guy from this party called FNLA, they burn with a lot of people inside there, they burned the tabernacle. And when Simon Toko got that message, it was like, ah, they are messing with me. And he prophesied against this party. He said, from now on, this party will lose its power and will be reduced to dust. And guess what? That party back in those days was a strong party. But now, if you go to Angola, it's weak. It has no strength. It is divided. It is, you know, it's no threat. And because the, gov the Angolan government played with me, with, the, with him, this is also he said, because you played with me, you dismayed my party, so will be this country. You wonder why Africa is still like this. Our former leaders, they did a lot of, you know, wicked stuff. And all we need to do is pray to our brothers and sisters who are, who are in charge. In the leadership. And this is true. This is a reality. And this said, I will not die. Nobody can take my life. Simon Tok was a threat 
the government. So the first president persecuted him. The second president, he, was, he couldn't persecute him anymore because he was still there. You can do whatever you want to do, but don't touch this guy. Because this guy, they usually, you know, they say this is a witch, witch, witch doctor. He use witchcraft. They say, hey, this guy is a great witch, witch doctor. Don't touch him. Otherwise you will be killed. And then the people in politicians, they said even, don't you even touch, shake his hand. Because by the time you will, you will shake his hand, you will lose all your power. So whenever someone to invite them to come to church, you know, to attend the ser service, they, they, they will not come. They will send somebody else. So family Matono Masaka, um, um, I don't know, but some if you want to add something before we open the floor for, for a discussion, for question, comment. I think we spoke a lot. Yes, we, we did spoke a lot. It's not good. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, I just would like to put something very small there about this. I will never die. And this final um, point, Simon Talk was releasing and confirming, uh, addressing his power and setting free his people. He said, no more prison to my people. The, the Bundu, my church, no more prison. Because as Brother Benica said, he went through a lot. His people suffered a lot. Some of them, they were buried alive, buried alive, just by following Simon Toko. And then he was very angry about it. That, that's why he was prophesizing all of these things. There will be no more prison for my people, no more suffering for my people. It is not only for the Tokoist people, it is for all Africa, for all Lovans, there will be no more prison, no more slavery, because himself came and he said, has free. Dear family, we are free now. Consider yourself a free man, a free woman, because Krusba Congo came the second time and then he said to us, free. Don't let yourself to be in prison again, be brainwashed again, because the truth is there, is here. We are sharing to you. If you go in the book of Psalms, that is the just one verse quickly there, 118 verse 17, we're going to find what Simon Toko said. Psalms 118, verse 17. I don't know if anyone can read for us. Can you, can you read, please? Verse 18, Holy. I mean, verse 17 only. Psalms. I, yes, sir. I will not die. No, I will live in order to declare the works of Yah. Please, can you say it again two times, please? I will not die. No, I will live in order to declare the works of Yah. Again, please. People, I will, let us say I it now. will it's not die. Say, I will I not will die. die. No, I will live in order to declare the works of Yah. Simon Toko said, you have to say again, I will not die until I declare the work of Yah, of Mzame. We're not gonna die until we finish our mission here on earth. Can be vaccination, persecution, whatever. He said, it is over. Point 44, for now, 
From now on, Tatan Zambia prison is over. Your persecution's over. Suffering's over. I will not die. Mono kifuako. That's what Montoko said. Mono kifuako zinga ye zinga. He said, Mono kifuako zinga ye zinga. That's mean I will not die. I will live forever. Wow. Psalm 118, verse 17, Elder Kennedy. Thank you, family. Be strong. Because he said, we're not going to die. Everything is over. Because he the same thing is said in John 16, 33, I have conquered the world. You also are going to conquer the world. Victory is our Matondo family. Ingeta. Ingeta, Matondo Masaka. <laughs> yes, Matondo Masaka. You know, we will, for, for, for YouTube's sake, We'll, we'll close with the prayer and then we'll open the floor for a uh, question or comment or discussion. So I will, I'd like to invite, you know, um, um, also, okay. Yes, uh, somebody to lead us um, a short prayer. Sister Elber, are you there? Okay, Sister Patrina, are you there? Yes, I'm here. See oh. me. See me. We can't see your face. Oh, I'm in the dark. <laughs> the lights are out. I mean, come oh. on, so the lights are out. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. Nice to see you. No problem. No problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, no problem. So, I'm at Masaka. So, yeah. Um, Sister Randy, can you please pray for us quick, for YouTube's sake? Kembo, Kembo, Katan, Zambi, Yamazulu, Kifumu, Kwakuisa. Glory to your name, Katan, Zambi. We say glory to your name. Hallelujah. We, Yabanan, Zambi. We come before you to glorify you, to say Matondo Masaka, Tatanzambi, for revealing the truth to us, Tatanzambi. The things that we have forgotten, the things that we did not know, but we know now because of you, Tatanzambi. You reveal to us the truth. You have opened our eyes, you have opened our ears. Satan Zambi, you have told us what we are here to do. You have brought us together for a specific reason because we were always together, Satan Zambi, to do your work here on earth. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory, all the kimbo. Zola Quingi, Satan Zambi. You are holy, holy, holy. We thank you, Tatan Zambi. We ask that you continue to establish our footsteps here, Tatan Zambi. Establish our ways. Hallelujah. Our eyes are open and we are free, Tatan Zambi. Kembo, 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 Tatan Zambi, Mpungu Tulendo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ingeta. Ingeta. Matondo Masaka, sister, Matondo. Matondo, so um, apologies, you know, we took uh, a while. <laughs> That's how it happened. Yes. So please, if you have any comment, um, question, please, you free. <laughs> Mas a Júlio, mas ela é pangue
Quand t'as tout isolé, nous est laissé au Mishima Fangé nous est laissé au Mishima Fangé nous est laissé au Mishima Jésus, y'a un mon Dieu qui t'a n'a pas eu mon âme. Oh, mon Dieu qui t'a n'a pas eu mon âme. Oh, mon Dieu qui t'a n'a pas eu mon âme. Pas qu'elle t'a n'a pas eu mon âme. Tout ce 